All right, take two on this. Uh, T minus 60 seconds. All right, we're we're approaching liftoff here. Ooh, boy. All right, 30 seconds. Roger that. We should be good. We should be good. <laughs> All right, Aaron, we're going to bring you into space this time. <laughs> should be no problem. We're going to be monitoring this during ascent. This is pretty much all we're monitoring to ascent. This and our FD AI. And knowing when to pull this handle. Roger that. This is it. Oh, boy. Oh, I love the whoop. Lift off. Verify clocks are running. Clocks are running. That is a lot of shaking. Yes, it is. We do have roll program, yes. And it seems like we have pitch program. All right. We seem to be in good shape. We seem to be in good shape. <laughs> the last flight, this was all off to the side and obscured. Uh, it wasn't good. But this one seems to be working okay. Abort mode one to two. That means we have reached 1,500 feet. No, not 1,500 feet, 15,000 feet. That should be 25,000 feet. So abort mode, uh, one to two, about 35,000 feet here. I no longer want to pull this handle to abort and we'll just ride it out. Let's ride this Titan into orbit. Yeah, let's get this out of here. So now our abort mode is going to be shutting down the engine and ejecting and going for a regular landing rather than e ejecting ourselves from the capsule. All right, we're about 50% fuel we're at 60,000 feet and ever increasing. 70,000 feet, we're pulling two, 1.5 to two Gs, board mode two. Roger that, 80,000 feet. The atmosphere has now bled away. We're at 25% fuel remaining on our first stage of the Titan two. Prepare for staging. All right, we are above 100,000 feet. And our fuel is getting low. We're about to see staging here. Remember, these being off means that we're okay. This means it's on standby. So if one of these was red, it means pressure was building up and we would likely see an abort light trigger. But we seem to be okay for right now. We're at T plus two minutes and 20 seconds. All right, Aaron, how are you feeling about this, huh? You're gonna see the horizon in space for the first time. All right, engine cut off, separation. We have staging ignition. Roger staging, hell yeah. Oh, there's the sun. And there's the earth. Oh, this is incredible. Look at that horizon, says Aaron, yeah. Welcome to space, buddy. Welcome to space. We have good visual of the Earth, and the spacecraft seems to be okay. And we are, in fact, holding an attitude right now, rather than going all over the place, unlike the first time. <laughs> it was just a little bit of a bug, but that's okay. This flight seems to be going much, much better. About 80% fuel remaining on our second stage of Titan II. Taken in the sight. I just, I love the look of this capsule. It's very, very nice. 
gives me so much more control than I had in Mercury. So much more control of everything. Should we wait till we do some orbital maneuvering? I can't wait. I, I have yet to do any sort of rendezvous. We'll do that later in the campaign, I believe. I think we'll be rendezvousing with the Jaina for docking. That's going to be fun. All right, monitoring pitch. We seem to be pitching down to the horizon. Um, but it appears to be holding an attitude, and we appear to be facing prograde this time. <laughs> so uh, all should be well. Let's take a look at our ascent checklist here. Just for the final bit of it. Because we're about to burn out of our second stage here. Yeah, we will, on insertion, separate the capsule and jettison our fairing, which our fairing is covers over the um, horizon scanners, I do believe. Now, we, we, we appear to have a little bit of a roll here, and we're pitching down quite a lot. Uh, but that should be just for orbital insertion's sake. I know sometimes our attitude doesn't really care about roll all that much, and this isn't out of control like it was in the first flight there. Roger, Seco. All right, separating the capsule. All right, we are separated from the Titan. And now separating the fairing. There they are, they went away. Now our covers are no longer uh, covering up our horizon scanners. Just seen the scanner covers. I can see the cover, 90 seconds to horizon scanner acquisition. 90 seconds, all right. It looks like this is actually working as intended, but when it's not in the up position. Uh, six minutes, 20 seconds, okay. So the script wanted me to set this to up and have it on standby, but if it's just set to A, uh, I think that's going to be automatic and standby. It will be a mission timer just like the one in the center console. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Roger that. Enable the ohms and zero the forward and back correction uh, section of the IVIs. IVI is here. That's our maneuver sort of console. Press Roger when complete. All right. So we're going to open the pro, uh, propellant motor valves for ohms and turn the ohms on. And using... I, J, K, L, H, and N, we have left, right, up, down, forward, and back movement. Uh, so within one foot per second, I'm just gonna hit Roger. That's close enough, honestly. All right, complete the insertion checklist. Let's uh, close down the ohms here. Roger that. Let's complete the insertion checklist. Yeah, verify that all fuel stacks are on. Hold on, let's get let's get some light up there. Uh right. Yeah, we'll do we'll do that. That works. Alright, fuels are on, all the stacks are on. You can see here, yeah. All of that is on. We're good there. Uh we're gonna set these to safe now. Alright, good, good, good. Uh, we're going to turn our radiator from bypass to flow at two, my, uh, two plus 40 minutes. So that's when I'm going to actually hit stop here. And we are going to set this to actually, no, we want to, we, yeah, we want to increase this. We want to set this to 40 minutes. I'm actually going to do like 30, 38 minutes, 37 minutes. I'll set this to this, please. And we will have that countdown. This is basically like a timer slash stopwatch. It's called the event timer. And it allows us to time things like this, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's probably good. We're gonna set this to down and it'll be counting down. When that hits zero, we know that we can turn on the uh, radiator here. All right, scanner, let's set this to primary. Cause it's been 40, it's been 60 seconds. We have, we should have a horizon acquisition. Uh, sequence light test. Sure. Let's do the light test here. We did it on the ground. Let's see Amber and we'll do dim and bright and red, green, dim and bright. We're going to have it be dim so I can actually read them up here. 
All right. Uh, flip that off. Perfect. Perfect. Secondary O2 to close. That is this thing right next to us here. We can set that to close. And you've got one too. Set that to close. And now this has increased. This was not sensing anything. And now we have our oxygen pressure. Awesome. Okay, okay. Ohm's heater circuit breaker to close. Okay, that is this one up here. We want the Ohm's heater to be a closed circuit now. Uh, right here. There we go. That should be closed. And then the cryo quantity to off. One's right here. All right, so we're going to hit run. Running checklist. Proceed. Oh, we need to turn the batteries off too. We need to turn the batteries off. <laughs> I forgot about that. We're running just on, oh, fuse down, really? I thought that up was closed. Okay, okay, so in um, in pre-flight, we want that set to set, uh, to be off. I can actually verify that right now. And once we're in flight, it's called closed instead. That is, uh, that's interesting, let's see. Ohm's heaters. Oh, XMTRs. That's probably transmitters. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably what that stands for. Ohm's heater off. And I thought that is like an open circuit. Like it's off. I don't know. But off and closed, I guess, are the same uh, thing. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna flip it on. I think it wants to be on. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Y'all can yell at me if I'm wrong. Running checklist. Roger that. All right, set the computer to catch up. I accidentally set it to pre-launch first. That should be fine. So catch up, you can see here, this is our uh, auxiliary tape and it's running. It'll take a little while for, for the computer, which is running off tape, to switch to that node. Roger that. Press start when the computer program has loaded. This takes 10 minutes. Uh, and it can be seen when the tape running indicator has extinguished, yeah. So, yeah, 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 we're gonna do that in 10 minutes. So, and that's about 25. Uh, meantime, I don't know if it, oh, this is just rate. Oh, it doesn't seem like we've really picked up the horizon here, does it? Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, I kind of want to, I don't want to go to pulse and just give me control of the thing. We're going to point slowly towards the horizon here. I think we're pretty much going uh, sharp end forward. All right, we're going to hit rate command, stop our uh, rates, and then we will close the ohms and set this back to platform. I just wanted a better view of the horizon, that's all. All right, I'm going to time skip ahead to maybe about 25. All right, we should be able to hit run here. Start. Computer is running catch up. And now we have another uh, indicator here. One right. Oh. Roger, DCS. DCS. I'm not sure what that is. Um, our forward said six feet. And then it went away. Interesting. Okay, we are uplinking an OBC update with the target parameters of the new circular. Oh! Oh, right. Okay. So. Uh, it said this in the briefing, if our orbital insertion was a little bit off of the intended parameters, that they would input the new parameters and zero that out so we don't really have to worry about that. So I think that's what just happened right there. Uh, one foot per second left, I'm not going to worry about at the moment. Okay, we're up looking an OBC update with the target parameters of the new circular orbit. This burn will take place, excuse me, at periapsis. Pair G in about 49 minutes and 5 seconds. Okay. 49 minutes and 5 seconds. So... 
If I, uh, if I sit this to about like 49 minutes, well, it'll be about 48 minutes by the time I actually get up here, isn't it? That should be about right. And when that's about 20 minutes, we'll know that we can actually turn our uh, radiator from bypass to flow. This is a really handy feature to have. It's like having Kerbal Alarm Clock in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, but anyways, I'm not sure if our nav ball is supposed to look like this or not, but we're facing the horizon here regardless. Should be all right. Roger that. Roger, we'll prepare for a circularization burn at the next perigee passing in about 48 minutes, 59 seconds. If you feel too pressured, the burn can take place at the apogee passing of the next orbit. Just follow the circularization check list manually. Roger that. Okay, you know the drill. <laughs> Verify the OBC cores and reference the circularize orbit checklist. Right. Um, copy that. When we'll start at perigee and we'll lower apogee. Keep an eye on the time to perigee. I'll prepare for the burn and let me know when it's five minutes to burn and we'll enable the ohms. Roger that. Powering control for the ohms. It is now on. I guess we want it on. That's right. Ohms ready. Set the uh, SC to... Yeah, yeah. We want to set the platform to sharp end forward. And then our nav balls. Our nav balls were free. That's right. The reason that that looked like that was this was set to free. If we actually give it something here, then we will set our uh, nav ball to the horizon. That means our horizon scanners are operating nominally. That's good. All right. I feel pretty happy in this, this cockpit right now. Roger that. Uh, SC2 sharpen forward. Burn will be prograde using forward thrusters. Translate backwards in uh, in sharpen forward to lower apogee at perigee. Burn will be prograde using forward thruster thrusters. Uh, and then it's telling me to... Oh, yeah, the forward th facing thrusters. So we're translating backwards. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so it wants me to check on the checklist for circularize orbit. This will show us our uh, target perigee in kilometers. It's not kilometers from the surface, though. It's the kilometers from the center of the Earth, which is very interesting. So from the center of the Earth to sea level, uh, I'm told by the developer is 6371 kilometers. So if we take 6525 minus 6371, we're left with 154 kilometers. Uh, so it's 154 by 153 kilometer uh, target orbit. Um, that's pretty much that's pretty much the plan. So 6525 by 6524. Uh, we can just verify that though. Um, and that's an orbit. So, okay, well, read time to AP and time to PE. All right, time to AP. This should be in seconds. So we're going to clear that. It is core 73 to our apogee. Let's read that out. 5166. Now we can continually click this button and count it down. Uh, 5160. That's a, that's a whole lot of seconds. All right, so we're going to clear. And our perigee is in is 74 readout 2505 okay okay so 2505 3505 divided by divided by 60 is 41 so this is, that's in about 40 minutes <laughs> i can't do math in my head for right now uh at apogee or at perigee it's gonna be at perigee here so yeah 41.75 that pretty much coincides with this. this we're at 41 minutes now read that out all right so i'm gonna do let me do this uh 40 minutes at 40 minutes this should say 2400 over here so I'll hit read out yeah so this will this will hit zero about 20 seconds before our actual perigee so uh, we're good there. We're good there. And at our perigee, we will zero this out. And it looks like, um, it looks like we're only one feet per second off. I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know if that's right. All right. Time skipped ahead a little bit. 
I figured out the codes, or I was told the codes, I mean. 98. Read out. That is our current apogee. We clear that. 99. That is our current perigee. Now, 57. That should be our target apogee. And 56 should be our target perigee. Okay. So you can see here that, you know, 98. Our current apogee is 96. And we want it to be 25. So that makes it about 71 kilometers too high on our apogee. Now, something that just switched, I didn't notice it happen, but you can see here, we now have our corrective maneuver for our perigee uh, to 71 feet per second aft. I believe that's, I mean, this says change in velocity feet per second, so that's gotta be that. That's the, that is the kilometers difference between our perigee and our apogee. I wonder if that is just a coincidence or if that's uh that's sort of how that works that's interesting but we now have this set it was set at zero before which was a little bit confusing but now we we can see and uh i can hit nine oh sorry clear that 98 five, yeah six five nine six i can hold the thrusters down and hit readout to update that until we get that down to six five two five and then our maneuver will be complete. And that's how we can verify this. Although we don't necessarily need to do that. We can just watch this number go to zero and then verify that afterwards. But, you know, it's kind of cool. But now it's been, uh, let's see this right here. I, I, it's been 52 minutes since liftoff. So we can go ahead and set our radiator to flow instead of bypass. That was something that was mentioned. Okay. So our time to, uh, time to perigee, it is, right? It's perigee, we're doing this, uh, is going to be 74. And we can verify our time to, hold on, clear, 74 readout. Thousand, uh, it, was, it was 1169 uh, seconds till our maneuver. That should coincide with our 19 minutes that is counting down here. So let's time scale forward even more. It's making that audio, but it's actually not using our thrusters when we're time skipping. So we don't have to worry about that. Yep. Verify. We're a little bit, we're, we're giving us a, a, like a 20 second heads up. All right. Five minutes to PRG. Prepare for the burn. If you need to wait for the next passing, use the circularized orbit checklist and execute the burn at the next apogee instead. No, we can do it here. Let's circularize this orbit. All right. All we gotta do is hold N to do aft thrust, I believe. And we'll find out if it's H or N, I suppose. Two minutes till our burn. One minute till our burn. And we should be able to hit our thrusters now. Let's wait for autopilot, okay. If I hold down N. Yep, that's it. We are pulsing backwards and Let's for the first time take a look at what it looks like outside. We can't really see a whole lot, but those are our aft facing thrusters right there. So we're kind of in the dark. All right, let's uh, read this out. 17 seconds, 18 seconds, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. If I hold this, it stops our time to uh, our perigee. So it'll hold us still. Let's get us a little bit closer so we're most efficient then. Five, four, three. Now we're gonna hold it. This should actually increase a little bit, but that's pretty good. And now let's check our current, uh, current apogee. Read that out. You can see that is increasing. Awesome, awesome. And after we do this, I'm gonna try left, but one feet per second, that's, uh, that's pretty A-OK, -okay, honestly. We are changing our orbit to be circular around the Earth. Oh, that's so much fun. Orbit is circular within mission requirements. Roger that. Let's read this out. 6525 and our current perigee. 6524. That's the exact orbit we wanted. Oh, we can verify that that works perfectly fine. I'm going to try burning left or right here. Oh, okay. That's increasing it. So we go left. I just want to zero it out. I want to zero it out. Will he let me? 
Yes! Yes! Oh, that's satisfying. Great job. Main objective is complete. How much fuel do we have left? Let's see. Uh, Ohm's fuel. We didn't use hardly any of it. We could do so much more up here. You don't gotta send me home yet. Roger that. Not bad. The next item on our flight and plan is to start preparing for the retrograde burn. Oh, also, we can stop this. <laughs> we wish to splash down the Atlantic, so our retrograde burn should be on the first should be on the west coast of the United States using the orbital cursor on orbit view F3. Drag the slider so its position is above the coast. <gasps> we get to use the the orbital map view now. All right. So this is basically simulating something that ground control can do for us. We obviously wouldn't be able to do this in the capsule. Okay, so looking around at our points here, we have blue, which I think might be us. Uh, red, which might be the Titan II upper stage. And we have our apogee, our descending node. And uh, over here in the green should be our orbital pointer, perigee and ascending node. So all of that just all in one there. But this lets us move our orbital pointer, which is what the game would like me to do. Now taking a look at the transcript, it wants me to do that uh, just over the coast. We wish to splash down the Atlantic, so we should be on the west coast of the US. Okay, so we will go ahead and move this to the west coast of the United States here. Well, Mexico looking like uh, we'll just do this right here. That should be, that should be fine, just like that. That's our orbital pointer. All right, so then we go into the cockpit view and request our retro burn should happen on the orbital cursor point. Okay, so that's really cool. We can go to the map view and tell ground control and probably have them set our computers to do our retro burn at a specific point. Oh, that's very, very cool. Okay, so let's go back into the cockpit view. All right, and uh, time to retro check. That should be, no, not check. Request, oh, retro at, no, retro at orbital cursor. There it is. Time to retro has been updated to two minutes and 49 seconds. Please double check core one nine and make adjustments if needed. Two minutes and 49 seconds. Um, That's coming up quick, check core 19. Uh, read out. Yep. Yep. That's happening right now. All right. So retro power retro squibs all on. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Retro burn should happen. Yep. 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 Retrograde checklist. Yep. I no longer have 10 minutes. I have one minute. Uh, honestly, uh, I'm kind of thinking we should do this next orbit, but I think there's a time limit. Uh, five minutes to retro. We're gonna close this. Coolant pumps off. Get that out of there. Batteries test. We don't... No, nope, I don't have time to test the batteries, but we're gonna set those to on. We're gonna slap our fuel cells off. All right, should be good there. Separate the ohms line. Oh, RCS, press. Separate ohms line, press. Separate. Uh, hold on. This should probably be set to backwards before I separate anything. Here, separate electricity. Indicate retro attitude is not correct yet. Oh gosh. We got 80 seconds. All right, all right, we should be good. We should be good. The retro auto fuse is, let's see. Retro auto fuse is on. Uh, actually, manual, fuels, manual fuse is on. Not gonna set a timer. BEF checklist. Perform enable RCS checklist. All right, we're gonna wait. Oh, that's right, that's right. We disabled our ohms. We have to use our, our normal, our, our uh, re-entry thrusters to actually move to, uh, read out, 36 seconds. All right. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We have to uh, use our RCS here to actually put us in the right place. I really hope that this didn't just put us in a spin. Oh, no, we are in control. Okay, we should be good. We should be good. 19 seconds. 
BF checklist is checking everything here. Indicate retro attitude. Yep, okay, okay. Computer re-entry. Oh god, that's not gonna be set right. That's not gonna be set right at all. Um Separate adapter. Uh shoot, 30 seconds to retro. We're uh let's see, arm auto auto retros. Retro rockets, squibs are armed. Yup. Um, when is our, I don't think something, I don't think I did, I don't think I did something right here. I did something wrong, but what we need to do is arm auto retro. Okay, we're burning retro a little bit late, but that's okay. Computer should be holding us in a uh, retro attitude it appears to be doing so according to our indicator right here so we should be good there our computer we should have set this to re-entry i don't know how long it takes to do that for our tape so we'll have to see we'll have to see uh wait for us uh i was supposed to actually hit Manual fire that one second after just to make sure I did not. Uh, retro jettison. Let's, uh, yeah, we gotta arm the this and then wait till that is glowing. It is glowing. So we decouple our retro jettison. Now we are only the re entry module. We have nothing behind us but our heat shield in this capsule. And if here's RCS is going a little bit crazy here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is let's see rates see our attitude should be this um plant in forward let's do rate command re-entry and we'll fly this thing manually uh, because I think I may have done something wrong with the uh, autopilot there and our computer is still running the tape for re-entry and we've already done our re-entry burn. Now if we take a look at things here, let's let's clear this. 98 should be our apogee. 6524, right. 99 should be our perigee. 5629. That is inside of the atmosphere. That's that's beneath the surface. We're coming back home. Okay. Retro jettison. Yes, post retro jettison. Uh, we're going to do retro power safe. Uh, retro jettison safe. Those safe. Landing squib, we need to arm that. These are open because I switched to them already. Uh, control power is set to ACME, yes. Uh, when ox tape is green, computer start. Oh, when one, when ox tape is green, computer start. Perform reentry HF radio checklist. So, that's green. Is that what it mean? Is that what it means? I don't know if it's a good idea to start that right now. It's it says it wants me to maybe. So if I go to platform. And I hit start. Nope, I don't like it. I don't like it. We're just gonna we're gonna power down. No, oh, oh, I'll leave it be. I'll leave it be. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do manually controlling our attitude because we can see where we need to be on the FDAI here on Navball. We can see our indicators, and it will tell us where we would like to be uh, facing for our re-entry attitude. We have manual control of that with W, A, S, D, Q, and E. That should be perfectly fine. Perform the re-entry, oh, perform the re-entry HF radio checklist. Okay, set HF. So HF control uh, external. 
that should be... Oh, this is set to re-entry here. HF control. This is the HF antenna. Probably antenna select would be re-entry. Radio mode A or B high frequency. Uh, we hit run on this one. No, I guess we're good. I guess we're good for that. All right, so it told me to run some checklists, so I need to actually do some of these. Uh, I, I did them all because I was panicking, but what we need to do is actually hit run on these and clear. Checklist complete, adapter is separated. Next we have the T minus 30 retrograde checklist and they'll tell us when to run it. This is this is what they would have been talking to us about, but I had to do that quickly because I gave myself no time to actually do retro on time. I could have waited another orbit, but I think that there's like a time limit on the on the actual like campaign mission, and I want to be able to complete it. <laughs> retro sequence starting, double checking. Retros are burning. When burn is complete, perform the retro jettison. Please can please complete the post retro jettison checklist. Okay, this is it. We are soon entering the atmosphere. Doing great. Time flies when in space. Insert your D-ring. Oh boy. All right, we got this thing again. We got the ejection seat again. Good luck with re-entry. If you feel you have the time and control, perform some slight RCS movements to verify its function. I was doing that. Copy that. See you on the inside. All right. Yeah, we should be good. Um. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be, we should be all good. I'm going to run some of these checklists just to make sure there isn't some like hidden dialogue that I'm missing. Post retro jettison run back. All right, so landing is very, very easy. Very easy to do. So run you through landing. This light will light up at 40,000 feet. At that point, we hit our drogue. This light will light up at 10.6 thousand feet. At that point, we hit our parachute here. And then right before hitting the surface, we activate landing attitude, which I don't exactly know how it works. It, maybe it shifts where the uh, parachute is attaching to us. Maybe it shifts some ballast around. Some Something causes us to, instead of falling backwards, be falling sideways, and we'll splash down horizontal to the water like a boat. Um, and then we'll simply cut the parachute afterwards with this one. So that is, uh, that's it. All we got to do is wait for re-entry to occur. Uh, a little bit of a dicey last second re-entry, but I think we did things okay, save for I'm not sure if I did the computer thing right, which is why I'm controlling it manually just to be safe. All right, let's time warp ahead to atmospheric entry. All right, here we go. Building up, hold tight. This will be a different type of ride. Can't wait for some fresh sea air. All right, we're using WASD to control our attitude for re-entry here. And something is indicating our re-entry attitude on the nav ball. And that would be this right here. Rate command, re-entry. Roger that, we got this. Roger. Read, one, G. This is Aurora, do you read? You're ready to flick our drogue up. Clear. Sure. Is. See you. Visual. Roger that. We hear you one over five. Can you repeat? Okay, we have contact. Follow the landing checklist and prepare for the drogue release. Roger that. Roger, great to see you. We have visual. Welcome home. Yes. We have made it back into the atmosphere. Uh, our drug light. There we go. There's our drug light. On. All right, because that was at 40,000 feet. Our drug has deployed. There goes the drogue. Roger, drug. Prepare for main. At 10.6 thousand feet, which we can see on our altitude indicator, we will deploy our main parachute. But man, is it good to see that thing up there. A little bit of a little bit of a dicey thing there. We can definitely turn off our RCS there for sure. Uh, 
We, we still have the option to eject if we really want to, but I really don't think I want to do that. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to. We are currently at 25,000 feet and falling. So as we fall back down here, hmm. Post-flight analysis of that flight. We got into orbit okay. We were able to maneuver okay. Uh, Re-entry was a little bit... <laughs> A little bit sudden, uh, because I didn't realize where we were in relation to the coast at that time. But I think we performed everything okay. It looks like the computer finished running that tape, too. I'm not I'm gonna hit... I'm gonna turn it off, actually. I want to make sure that nothing goes wrong there. Uh, we'll flick some things off there. I'm really confident this was a very very simple mission that just basically gets you used to how to start up the gemini capsule how to get into orbit uh, the basics of maneuvering um just the basics of running the well basic checklists and i think it's going to get more advanced from here i think we're going to do spacewalks i think that we are going to do all right 10.6 main shoot deploy I think we're going to be docking with the Jaina. I don't know what to expect. We might do the rendezvous mission where we rendezvous with another Gemini. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm very excited. Prepare for splashdown. Roger, recovery close? On their way. Not too far. We still see you. Roger that. Awesome. On our way back, we're at about seven, 700 feet here. Very, very cool. Landing altitude. What altitude do they want me to actually do that at? I don't remember the exact altitude. I know it's like right before hitting the water. And it isn't a gradual movement. It just snaps us sideways. But I can't, you can't ask for too much, you know. Uh, 500 feet. Okay. So are we, we are reaching 500 feet time now. And I'm going to look away from the window so it doesn't feel as gradual. Let's say we hit this and just go... Boom. And now look at that. We are facing horizontal to the water, so we splash down like a boat. Very, very cool. Uh, let's hit free on there. Cool. All right. So this has been a mission success. Like I said, I think things are going to get even more complicated as time goes on here. Uh, 300 feet and falling at a rate of 8 feet per second. 7 feet per second more. Oh man, it's good to be back. It's good to be back, Aaron. How was your first space flight? It wasn't a very long one. I'm sure we'll do longer ones in the future. I think I have a pretty good understanding. I want to learn what some more of these uh, OBC codes are. Because I want to be able to look at them uh, in more detail than than what I have in this flight. But maybe that will happen in future campaign missions as well. All right, splashdown. Uh, we might flip upside down here. That sometimes happens. Splash. And there's our chute. Oh, I didn't actually shoot us in the parachute. Let's do that. There we go. Let, let's close this. Looks like we did not flip upside down. We are we're out here like a boat. Pretty wavy, though. Cool, cool. That was great. Indeed it was. MCC, we have splashdown. Everything is good. Roger, welcome home. Hope the boat floats, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I sure hope so, too. There's a lot of happy faces down here. Can't wait to see you guys. Roger that. Thanks. I believe the score of first has increased to four to one now? Huh? <laughs> you beat me three to one in Project Mercury. I have not forgotten that. Roger that. I bet you haven't. <laughs> I'll see you both soon. This is MCC signing out. Recovery will take over. The transmission ends. That is mission success, everyone. So, I have no idea what the next missions will have in store for us yet. But, I'm sure it'll be something juicy. Thank you so much for watching. And peace out.